Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. Let's talk about two things. Making your gardening less expensive. And let's talk about how you can do that through a closed loop system. So let's start with the obvious. What is a closed loop system? A closed loop system refers to supply chain. You reuse materials over and over and over to create new products. It conserves natural resources, diverts um, waste out of landfills, and it reduces your monetary output on your farm, in your garden, on your hobby farm. It doesn't matter what type you've created for yourself. Now, there are really two types of closed loop systems. There are healthy ones and there are unhealthy ones. So let's start with the most nasty type, cathodes which are concentrated animal feed operations. The majority of Americans eat meat from that type of closed loop system. The way that they do this is a mega corporation puts all these animals in a concentrated building, thousands of them. And as their waste builds up in an unnatural and unhealthy way, they collect that waste in a way that it seeps back into the environment, poisons things, I mean, there's no way around it. Then they take that waste and they either put it back into your animal's feed, like your dog food, your cat food, your pelleted feed, along with unused bedding, feathers, and unused parts from the animal, like hooves. Um, I think somebody was telling me that intestines, like, those things get put back into our animal's feed and then we're stuck with animals who get sick all the time, who are weak, who get cancer more often than ever in history. How many of you growing up remember somebody having a dog that they had it from like kindergarten all the way until they graduated high school? The same dog, never went to the vet, didn't have allergies, I didn't have tumors, didn't get cancer, didn't have arthritis. I mean, yeah, it was an old dog when it died, but just, it was healthy one day and then it just, it died. Like, I remember those days, but those dogs weren't fed bag feed 25 years ago. They were fed leftovers from home cooked meals and a lot of fresh meat when people butchered out on their farms. So it makes you think, guys, Times haven't changed that much. We've just changed the things that we allow into our environment. Now, that is a closed loop system where they go from the animal to the waste and they take the waste and they make more money off of it. Still bad for the environment and it's bad for you and I. From there, they also turn that waste into fertilizers that they put on commercial crops that are fed to you and to me, back to our animals and back to the animals and corn, and things like that, barley, hay, that they're feeding these animals in these cathode systems. And then on top of all of that, they sell the meat to you and I. So they've created a system, one corporation with multiple small companies, subsidiaries underneath it, and that money just keeps rotating in their system and we just keep purchasing from them. But today I'm gonna tell you about a closed loop system that is healthy and that actually saves you money and increases the health of you, your animals, and your food. All right, guys. So a closed loop system on a farm works like this. We have meat rabbits. I take their manure, I compost it, I fertilize with it, and I feed my red wigglers with it. Then I collect the rabbit urine. I use it as a pesticide well, it's a pest deterrent and a nitrogen fertilizer for my plants behind me at no extra cost to me. I don't purchase any commercialized products, absolutely none. We make our own worm castings. We make our, we, well, the rabbits make our rabbit manure and now we're urine. The second thing is we have a racking pen where rabbits are in front of chickens. They poop and pee into that pen and the chickens are in a deep mulch system where I'm adding vegetable scraps, coffee grounds, leaves, grass clippings continuously into that pen with the chickens and they're constantly stirring it. There's my usable compost for my garden. 
Then I also have clean chicken to eat as a meat and a protein, as well as fresh eggs regularly. Now, if you can see that closed loop there, now I don't have any inputs on my form that I don't know where they came from. I'm not putting more money into the big man's pocket. My gardening has just went from extremely expensive with the cost of fertilizers going up to a very expensive, sustainable, and regenerative practice. My animals eat back from my garden. Waste, I'll tell you what, we're working on getting the rabbits off of pellets right now. Um, had some great input from a friend of mine who had come and done a tour here recently. She sent me some great information. Um, shout out to you, Nicole. I am gonna look into that too, thank you. And we eventually will, we, we're, we're doing a quarter acre market garden because we're only a two acre farmstead. So you have to work with what you have. You can create a closed loop system on a thousand acre farm. I mean, this is doable. I don't have any pollution running off my farm. My yard doesn't stink, but I've got quail on one section, rabbits on another, rabbits on this side with chickens. It's just thinking through the processes. That is how they used to do it back in the old days. Now, the second topic for today, and I told you we talk about this, was making your garden less expensive or your gardening habits less expensive. The first thing that you do in there are six. Is you make your own potting soil, okay? Use 50% compost, 40% worm castings, 10% vermiculite. Now, I have to purchase the vermiculite, right? I'm really not that expensive. I don't use that much. Number two, seed your own plants. When you get started, you're gonna have to purchase seeds and there'll be some years that you just don't harvest seeds, you run out of time, whatever the reason is. They didn't dry right. So you may have a small seed cost, but for all those plants behind us, I don't think we have $100 invested in that. And that is nine 100 foot rows of food. The third thing, make your own compost, your own worm castings and your own foliar sprays. Guys, foliar sprays are amazing ways for pest deterrent, for nutrients, fertilization, getting your flowers, I mean your plants to flower more, for your fruit to set. So you can make your own foliar sprays. Go through our playlist. We have some in there. We talk about making it. I'll show you how to make it. Number four, recycle, upcycle, and repurpose materials in your garden for your pens, for your animals. It doesn't have to be gorgeous. I mean, you can make it look nice. My dad repurposes, re upcycles everything because my mom is not gonna let something in her yard that is not beautiful. <clears throat> Excuse me. So an example would be, we did buy some cattle panels at the beginning of this grow season because we knew we had these really long 100 foot rows and we've been never gardened like this. We bought the cow panels and the post, and I was like, woo, <laughs> what? $400 in post and cow panels? No, we got a, mm -mm, nope, that was only two 100 rows. So my husband's like, well, your dad gave us, and my uncle gave us, and I've been collecting some old fencing. We had rolled up and stored on one corner of our property. I said, unroll it, let's go for it. So now we have two of our rows, two of our 100 foot rows, is recycled or old purpose fencing works just as good as the cow panels of course you know for looks sake we put the cow panels in front so when people pull up on the property for tours you see the really pretty stuff first right and then you see the more practical things i needed some posts to stake up my bell peppers because they had gotten so large i did not want to go buy steaks from the store Again, like I said, I'm, I'm real big in not letting people have what I've worked so hard for, what my husband worked so hard for. So I called my dad and I said, hey, we've got a ton of these two by eights stacked at the back of the property, covered with plastic. What can I do with that to make steaks? He said, run them to the house. I'll run them through, I don't know, some kind of saw. And he did, he made all those steaks out here that you see behind me that are holding up my bell peppers. Then I had twine left over from when we did our strings throughout the entire garden to keep our rows nice and straight and everything. I just cut that, tied my plants up. Repurpose, recycle, upcycle, 
everything on your property. It, look, if you don't have a farm and you're like, I don't have any of that. Come on guys, go dig around in your garage, dig around in your attic, ask your neighbors. I mean, so, seriously, somebody, if you start trying to save money, if you make that a purpose to be a lender and not a borrower, if you make it a purpose that you're not gonna spend money you don't have to spend to garden, to farmstead, to homestead, you're gonna start cutting costs. You make that in your heart, that decision in your heart. And guys, I promise you, you can take this to the bank. People see your determination and they step up to the plate. You'll need something and all of a sudden that something will come into your hand or something that you can use in the place of what you thought you needed. God's good like that. Pray about it. He'll answer it. Test him. Try him out. He wants to see you be prosperous and successful. Not in debt and struggling to do what should be natural and easy. Number five, create a sustainable closed loop. Figure out a way to reduce pelleted feed. It's very unhealthy for our animals. Quit being afraid to step out and feed your animals something that nobody else does. Don't follow the herd. Everybody's still walking in the line and everybody's doing monkey see, monkey do. It's okay to step out and believe in yourself. It's okay to educate yourself with materials that you find online, books that you get, and scientific research on your part. You don't have to be a scientist to be able to document if something works for you or does not. Everybody lives in a different environment. We all, go on now, bug. We all live in different environments. We all have different situations, different abilities, different disabilities. And so we have to work with what God gave us as individuals and you can do it. You can be an individual. I've told y'all this a thousand times. I had people come and tell me two years ago, you absolutely cannot garden in Louisiana if you don't till on red clay. Really? Really y'all? What's this? What's this back here behind me? It's a garden. No till on Louisiana hard, compacted red clay. Look, I don't really care if somebody tells me I can't do something. I'll figure that out on my own. Now, if my father tells me that it's not going to work, he'll also say, but you go ahead and try it, Sam. Let me know what you think. 99.9% .9 of the time, he is correct. But he still supports the fact that I'm an individual and some things are best learned by trying, whether you fail or not. Failure is your best lesson. If you don't let it get you down, if you don't let everybody tell you what a failure you are, you're not always gonna be perfect. Number six, stop trying to keep up with the Joneses, y'all. They're drowning in debt. The Joneses are drowning in debt. And in this economy, people want what they see other people have. Sustainable ecosystems, healthy soil, they take time to develop. So you have to put the time and effort if you wanna grow food for your family. Am I saying you have to quit your job? Because a lot of people love. Well, I have to work, I have children, I homeschool. Yeah, okay. I think everybody in America has a job some sort. Watch my 80 year old dad's videos, y'all. He's 80 years old. I mean, honestly, how much kneeling and bending do you think he really can do at this stage in his life? Yet his gardens and mine are beautiful because he understands healthy soil. He understands how to take his time to make something work correctly. Do it right the first time. You don't have to go back and fix it. And that is what he always tells me. So if you've not subscribed to Papa Sammy and Allie Bugs YouTube channel, I highly advise you soak up my father's wisdom on these types of closed loop systems. The man grew up sharecropping in Biloxi, Mississippi. They didn't have commercial fertilizers. I see it on post all the time. Our, our parents and grandparents had commercial fertilizers. Well, I don't know how old yours are, but I can tell you right now, mine did not. Mine did not. They butchered their own animals. They fed their own animals out of what they could grow on their farm. They couldn't produce food for that animal. They didn't have it because it wasn't sustainable. So if you want to make your garden cheaper, you need to do those six things. And put your credit cards down start using this instead of that piece of plastic because if it's costing you three hundred dollars for a tomato you're doing something wrong guys you're doing something wrong 
reuse, repurpose, up, upcycle, everything, closed loop system. Everything works like this. So you guys have a blessed day. I really hope this video helped you. Please subscribe, like, and comment. We welcome you to come and tour Starkey Farmstead anytime you would like. We're located in Greensburg, Louisiana. We are a no-till, organic, regenerative market garden and a successful farmstead. You guys have a blessed day. We just wanna thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Starkey Farmstead. Today, we just wanna offer, offer you the opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's very simple, guys. You just have to believe it and you have to speak it out loud. So feel free to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask Jesus into my heart. I ask you to forgive me for my sin. Renew me, revitalize me, and pull everything in my life out by the roots that is not pleasing to you, Lord. Help me become a better person. And I thank you today, Lord, for my salvation. In Jesus' most precious name, you guys have a blessed and prosperous day.